Welcome to the Rusted Garden, uh, episode 19 of Garden Grounds. We will get started officially in about two or three minutes. As I wait for people to sign in, this is my basically public live. I do this every second and fourth Thursday at 11 o'clock, and I will answer a bunch of questions. Whatever you have uh, questions on about gardening, what's going on in your gardens right now or at the end of July, you can certainly throw them out there. I will present um, about five minutes worth of a topic, and today's topic is on cool crop transplants and seeding the warm weather crops in July. There's a lot that we can plant right now. So I'm just going to wait about two minutes for people to sign in, and then we'll, we will get started. Hey, Chicken Mama, you're number one, Brent number two. And if you guys, being the first ones in, can just let me know if you can see and hear me okay, that would be great. I tend to mess that up fairly regularly. Hello, Bobcat. A little learning, that's a good question. We're gonna cover that. Um, I'm just, again, you guys are getting in. I'm going to just wait a minute for more people to sign in. If you want to uh, do a super chat to make sure your question gets seen, that would be great. I will take those first. I'm going to stay on for about 30 minutes. The brassicas, real quick, like uh, broccoli, cauliflower, collards, they, and I'm in Maryland Zone 7, they are really best if you start them as transplants now. Get them growing. It's a little warm out. Um, but get them growing. Earlier in July is the best time here in Maryland, but transplants work really well. You can also experiment. You can have the transplants going and you can drop some seeds in. The reason you might want to do transplants is because you can control the environment a little bit better. You can keep them on the cool side of the house. They tend to do better than kind of baking in the hot sun of, of the summer. All right, you guys can hear me and it is 11 o'clock, so we'll officially get started. Um, and then I will get back to that brassica question, but let's start with um, planting the warm crops in July. So real quick, with the increase in warmth, obviously summer, with the increase in the soil temperature, that top two, four, six inches, getting up to 80, 90, 100, even 110, 120 degrees with the sun baking down, creates a great environment to reseed a lot of your warm weather crops. Instead of fighting keeping a cucumber plant alive or a zucchini plant that just is getting beat up by the vine borer, you can plant seeds directly in the ground. You might have to put some shade cloth over them, keep them cool. You're going to have to water every day or every other day. But the cool weather, I'm sorry, the warm weather crops, let me just check here. Zucchini, summer squash, cucumber, beans can all be direct seeded now. If you have a good 60 days before the frost, these are going to mature and be ready in under 45 days. They're going to germinate in anywhere from four to five to six days. So they can really um, germinate quickly and they mature to production, to harvesting much more quickly. And a lot of us just plant in May and June, plants get beat up, we get frustrated, we stop planting. But you can plant all of those now. And again, use Maryland as sort of your you, you know, the focus point. If you go south or where it's warmer, you have more time to do this. If you go up north, up the east coast, you have less time, but you can plant these warm weather crops again now, and then they grow into the cooler season, and sometimes you get a better harvest. I just want to add, too, that you can also plant bush-type melons, watermelons, cantaloupe, um, pumpkins, and you're looking for varieties that may mature in 65 days or 75 days and if you've you know got time before that frost comes you can grow melons you can grow pumpkins and i just planted corn about 10 days ago a 65 day to harvest corn and that is accelerating the growth is phenomenal it's going to mature even sooner than that so i just want to give people a thought that if your garden is beat up warm weather wise go ahead and plant some of these crops um and direct seed them. You'll be surprised. Just keep them watered. And also you may have to use some shade cloth. So we'll get to the cool crops in a second. Let me check to see what questions we have so far. And if you like this format, I have perk memberships. There are some perk members here. They'll let you know um, 
you know, <laughs> whether or not it's worth the money. But I do four or five mentoring Q&As a month like this. The groups are much smaller. We stay on a good hour, answer any question you might have. And I also do a Grow as We Grow series, which is actually going to premiere today at 12, where Perk members can send in videos or video questions. And I do a couple live classrooms per month. All right, so let me find some questions here. And Brent, I just saw, so notifications, like this event has been up for three weeks on YouTube. I don't know why notifications are slow in some cases. Um, I just don't have an answer to it and I've asked before. All right, what questions do you have? And if you have a question um, and you're just signing in, type question in bold before it because a lot of people are in the chat and sometimes it's hard for me to find a question and you can always do you know, a super chat if you want your question to come up to the top here. So let's see, question, question, questions. Um, Bobcat, um, I saw your question. How do I manage watermelon vines? So there's a couple kinds of watermelons. Um, well, there's a lot of watermelon varieties, but you may have a bush type variety that the vine only gets three feet, two feet, three feet, even four feet. Those you just tend to want to let grow because they're going to have limited amount of flowers and a limited amount of fruit. Other melon plants um, can grow eight, 10, 12 foot vines, and you really just want to shape them into the direction of your path and you want them to grow a good amount. But if you have melons forming, the vines are getting out of control. You can actually cut the tips of them and just let the melons develop that are on there. Or you can remove some of the side vines that come out. So you can prune them. I do recommend trying to give them the space they need so that they can grow. Um, melons, cantaloupe, pumpkins tend to send out roots from the vines. They do better when you just kind of let them sprawl. But you can prune them okay. All right, and if I missed your question, you might have to send it again, but let's go with Tiny. What is the best fertilizer to get squash fruiting? It seems to be growing a ton of vines and leaves on my squash and dying before they even get a chance to be fertilized. So my answer people won't like, there isn't one. If you've been putting in organic granular, compost, your bed has fertilizer in it, your plants are otherwise healthy, you can't really change it. You can try, like a product, there's more bloom out there, it's a zero. 1010 um, water soluble fertilizer. They say that helps with flowering, that helps with fruiting. However, if you have a healthy garden, it's going to flower probably at capacity. So adding more in doesn't mean you get like 50% more flowers. So what might be happening is that your male and female flowers aren't opening right. They're not being fertilized as you are mentioning, but there's not a whole lot you can do about that. Um, any you can give them some fertilizer if you feel like that's going to help, you know, maybe get them to flower or produce more. But there's no real magic bullet. If there were, we would all know about it and we would hit our plants every time with this exact fertilizer and we'd have mega amounts of flowers, male and female. Different varieties flower at different times. The male and female flowers, sometimes they take a while to get in sync. If it gets extra hot and the sun is heating that soil up, to 100, 110 degrees, the top couple of inches. Sometimes the plant changes how it flowers. So unfortunately, there's nothing you can really do. You could try something like More Bloom, who I'm not affiliated with, but it's a nice zero, no nitrogen, 1010, phosphorus potassium to help. Uh, Urban Chicken Mamas, should I bother cutting off dying yellow cucumber leaves? No diseases. I really don't. I remove leaves. Um, to really reduce, I remove the leaves that are inside the canopy of the cucumber plants because they're just not bringing any energy into the plant. They're a great place for diseases to sit and pests to sit. If you have some outside leaves that are yellowing or browning, you can remove them, um, but it, it doesn't really stop problems. Like a lot of people think that if you remove a fungus covered leaf, it will stop the spread. Unfortunately, that leaf 
in the spores have already spread to the green leaves. So it's really more important to get a spray routine down, get all the leaves treated, get all the leaves covered. You will kill off the fungi, you will kill off insects, and that leaf will just kind of die off. If you have the time, you know, certainly remove them. But if you don't, no big deal. Susan has a good point. Just, you know, the, the days on the peck are never really exact. They're just general. And the warmth of the soil will make them germinate quickly. Maturity may be longer when the days get shorter, but certain plants don't mind that. Um, thanks for the super chat. Let's see what that one is. Brent, an extra thanks for PREC memberships is worth it. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> well, you also paid for the advertisement. Um, I certainly appreciate it. And I really enjoy the PREC memberships. It's just a smaller group of people. People know what they're talking about. People are learning, people are sharing. So it's not just me saying this is how I garden. It's really a lovely interaction. Thank you. Um, Andrea, tomato plant leaves are turning yellow with brown black spots. So I do have some videos on it, a recent one. So if the spots have circles within circles within circles, concentric, concentric circles, brown rings, and then a yellow halo around it, it's probably a fungal issue. It could be a leaf spot. It could be um, early blight. They, either case, they need to be treated with an antifungal. And again, if you guys throw a question um, in front, it's easier for me to see your questions. All right, just trying to catch up here. All right, so the chat flies by pretty quickly. What kind of trellis should I be using for my melons? I have tall metal stakes for each of them, but I'm thinking I should trade up for tomato cages. So the more trellising you have for melons, the better. The melons can get very heavy. Um, I like using some sort of fencing or cattle panel or something I can weave up. An A-frame of just kind of metal works best. You can send the, cu uh, the melons or cucumbers or pumpkins up one side, down the other, and back up again. The biggest thing with the melons is they're going to develop and it can get heavy. So if they're hanging from the trellis, you need to support them with something underneath tied to the trellis so that the weight of the melon doesn't tear away from the vine or break the vine. Anna, you live in British Columbia. If it's radishes like 40, 50, 60 degree nights, 60, 70 degree days. So that's a great time. What I would do is start planting them. Um, and what I always recommend is middle of August. It's a little hot here for radishes, but plant them middle of August, maybe do like 25. Um, in another two weeks, do another 25. And then you can kind of see how they adjust to the cooling temperatures. Radishes can mature in, in as little as 25 days to 40 days. So there's not an exact time. There's probably kind of a span, but radishes can take a frost and you can you know, keep planting them pretty far into the fall until you're getting really heavy, prolonged frosts. Let me answer a few more questions and then we'll get to the cool crops. Donna, question. This is a question that if I knew, I'd be a millionaire. How do I deal with the little white moths that plague brassicas? There's so many of them. Their life cycles, not just the month of May or June. They last from like April till the frost comes in September. They are always laying eggs on your brassicas. They are always hatching that green worm that chews holes in there. The only way you can really manage them is to spray regularly your crops with neem oil, um, BT, you can put down insect dust, but the treatment is really a rotation or is a routine of a spray, you know, every probably every seven days so that you're just dealing with the, the hatching life cycle of the pests. Diane, I don't know what's affecting your green peppers. Um, it could be a fungal issue, but I'd have to see the, the plant. 
If the leaves are falling off from the bottom, could be watering issue, could be the heat. Either way, I would try to maintain the water. Give them a water-soluble fertilizer, any one you want, because they're going to need to grow some more green, uh, leaves. And then you want to look at the leaves. If you have spots on your leaves, just like the tomato question I was answering, with the yellow halo around it, it's probably a fungal issue and you would have to spray. All right, so let's go, we're at 11.13, so I am going to go to 11.30. So let's go to the second part of today's topic, cool crop, <laughs> cool crop transplants. Again, I'm in Maryland. You know, for me, starting some of these cool crops at, as seeds, as transplants, should have started maybe, you know, one to three weeks ago. But... Cool weather crops can take a frost. So we're using the warmth of August, July to get these plants to a size so that they mature, especially where we have shorter seasons. You figure out your cool crop planting by sort of picking the first frost date. And you're not worried that frost is gonna come and kill them because they can take a frost. The leaves can freeze, they do well. That's just to kind of give you timing. If you try and do cool crops like in June, you get them growing, a lot of them just don't do well. They don't like the hot soil, they don't germinate, um, they flower, they bolt, they taste terrible, uh, radishes become woody um, or don't bulb. So you're really figuring out the timing so that you can get them into the August garden get them growing, and then they mature when it's cool out and you got the frost. So the plants that you might want to start as transplants because you can kind of control where they're growing, start them in like yogurt sized cups. You don't want tiny little cells. You don't want to start them as transplants and keep them in the full sun. Um, six, eight, 10 hours, they're going to bake. They're not going to do well. You want to start your transplants either indoors or keep them sort of on I don't know, maybe the east side of your house or a place that gets morning sun. You just want to get them growing. You just want them to, to uh, and you want them to stay cooler. The plants that I think do best, and this is not an exhaust, exhaustive list, are kale, collards, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, and Brussels. They do really well to start now as transplants, maybe get four to six weeks worth of growth, and then you transplant them out into your garden somewhere you know, in the middle of August. Again, I'm in Maryland. Things to direct seed maybe towards the end of August would be lettuces, spinach, radishes. If you transplant them, if you direct sow them too soon in August, they may not germinate or they do germinate. They feel the heat, they flower, they just don't do well. So you're trying to figure out the timing to get them in the ground. They germinate quickly because of the heat, but then your fall temperatures are rolling in. And that's why I recommend maybe radishes you do August 15th. You do more um, September 1st, you do some September 15th. And you're trying to figure out that sweet spot of when your garden transitions from summer warmth and way too hot to a nice cool fall. Plants that you don't want to direct seed until it's really cool, like the temperatures have dropped, the nights are getting into the 50s and 60s, the days aren't really getting out of the 70s, are bok choy, pak choy, mustard greens, Chinese cabbage, um, arugula, they just love the cool weather. They can take significant frosts, and if you plant them too soon, they're going to take off, they're going to get about this tall, and they're going to send out flower stalks. So that group of plants has to go into the ground. Um, I, I always recommend direct seeding them, not as transplants, um, towards the end of September. Now, that was a lot of information in a short time. We covered this topic in the PERC memberships, and again, I do four or five of these types of uh, Q&As, for about an hour. All right, so that's the general topic. And the point is that you can start planting cool crops around now, either as transplants, keep them on a the cool side of your house or out of direct sun. You can start putting seeds in for the cool crops, but don't forget, you can still put in the warm crops. If everything has been devastated by whatever, put in more cukes, zooks, beans, and you will have harvest later in August early September, really into that frost comes and it will damage the warm crops. Hi, Joey. All right, so now I'm going back up and trying to pick up some questions. We got a good 15 minutes left. Sharon, question. I sowed and transplanted my sugar baby watermelons and cantaloupe at the same time. 
However, my watermelon is producing beautifully, but my cantaloupe is only producing flowers. That is, you know, that's a question a lot of people get. It just happens. Um, you can't change anything. If your garden is producing, your plants are healthy, you've been feeding, you've been taking care of them, the soil has what it needs. And the watermelon variety is just more quickly to form flowers, produce cantaloupe. I would suspect you need to, you know, wait a little bit longer. Also, if you find the varieties that you're growing don't do well in your garden. Maybe after the second year, switch it up. You know, change to a new um, cantaloupe variety. Um, get a shorter day cantaloupe variety. Get a bush type cantaloupe variety. Have a couple different types of melons or cantaloupe and then kind of see which ones do best in your garden. Angie, if it's just black spots, I mean, it still could be a fungal issue. It's hard without seeing a picture. Um, but I would definitely do what I said, and it's not going to hurt to start an antifungal on your pepper plants. Bonnie, understanding um, maturity dates is confusing to me. Yep, and most people. Does that mean, say, if maturity is 50 to 60 days, you begin harvesting first fruit 50 to 60 days? What it means is after... You put in a transplant and you got to give that transplant a week or two for the roots to establish. So you're still waiting a little bit longer. After a seed is planted and it germinates, you're counting 50 or 60 days. And that should be about when you get the first something of a harvest. Doesn't mean it stops then. And sometimes bigger harvesting doesn't start till day 60, day 70, day 80. Certain plants can keep producing through you know, a longer period of time. It's just a guideline. And that guideline doesn't talk to you about soil temperature. Um, some seeds germinate, take longer when the soil is cooler. So they're not germinating in that count to the 50, 60 days doesn't start till they germinate. Other times the soil is warm, the day is warm. When they germinate, they're ready to produce in 40 days. Like cucumbers and squash might say 45 to 60 days on the seed pack if you're planting in the spring. But I know that if you plant in the summer, they can be ready in producing. I have zucchini that have produced in 35 days from germination. So it, it just depends. Karen, when are shishito peppers ready to be picked? And I see one from Michelle. Um, they are ready when they're to the size you like. Shishito peppers are tricky because sometimes they're sweet. Um, they'll get maybe, I don't know, what is that? two, three inches long, you can really pick them anytime. But they also can be spicy, like a little mild heat or the seeds can be hot and it really varies. Um, Michelle, ye uh, yellow tomatoes with dark bottom. So if you have a tomato, the bottom is dark, it's brown, it's black, it's blossom end rot. It usually happens when there's irregular watering, the plant can't access calcium out and it takes calcium from the tomato and sends it to other places of the plant. The best way to treat that is just to start watering more frequently. You can cut off that brown bottom, assuming that it's blossom end rot and you can eat the rest of the tomato. Um, you could provide the garden with some calcium, like with some lime or something like that, but it's really usually due to watering. And I would keep note of that variety because if your other tomatoes are doing fine, this one could be more susceptible to it. Perk memberships is all a YouTube, Lillian. Um, it's all done through YouTube. So if you go on a desktop to my landing page, you'll see a join button. And you hit join, gives you the tiers, and you just select which one you want to um, you know, join. At the beginning of each month, I put out a list of all the events that will be happening for that month. And um, I schedule them, and you should get notification from YouTube. I also put them in a Facebook group and I put them on the community uh, tab on my YouTube page. If you're on a handheld device, and I've contacted YouTube because it's not easy. If you're on a handheld device, sometimes it's hard to find the join button. Um, but in every video in the description, I have perk memberships and you can click that link and it should take you to where you need to go. All right. Tiny Purple, what is your white moth spraying routine? Is it on your blog or in your book? 
I, so the routines are always going to vary. So that's why it's always general. It's like every seven to 10 days um, works pretty good. But if it rains and and it rains and it rains, then you have to do it more frequently. But the idea is trying to do it every 7, 10, 14 days and you're just getting the neem oil down or the BT down to always be dealing with hatching eggs and that white moth just keeps coming. So I'm sorry there's no exact routine. Tony, I had a squash plant planted in a container and it was not producing and had vine borers so I pulled it and threw it away. Can I replant squash seeds in the same container? Yeah, you can. You can certainly do that. I would try and add in, you know, a handful or two, well, not a huge handful, but a handful or two of um, organic granular fertilizer, really mix it through, fluff up the soil, um, water it in with a water soluble fertilizer, make sure your plants have, you know, the nutrition to start and just stay up on the watering, but you can reuse it. It's possible that the vine borer, you know, sent a larva down in there and it's going to do its thing, but it's the moth, it's the, or butterfly, I forget what it is, but it's, you know, the vine borer uh, moth coming, laying the eggs, and that what's, that's what causes the problem, but your soil is safe. I am just trying to catch up <laughs> with the chat. Again, it goes really fast. We're going to finish up in about six minutes. So super chat, I will take your question right away. Um, Nina, should I be worried about lots of birds in my garden? They are so cute. Um, no, I attract birds. I have, I have bluebirds. I have cardinals. I have sparrows. I have purple martins. The only bird I don't like are the cattail birds because they eat my berries. I only had one come in and it came in late. So it depends on the variety of the bird, but I like them. I want them in my garden. I want them walking around. I want them eating um, caterpillars and insects off of my plants. But it does depend on the variety. J. Bay, uh, think a shade cloth would be a good idea to start? Yes, so a good strategy is to use like a 50% or 70% shade cloth. It will provide either 50% shade or 70% shade, but enough light for your cool weather crops to germinate. It's a good way to do it. Ruth, can you talk about rust? My pole beans are covered in it. Should I remove them or treat them? So it depends how bad it is. You still have time to replant beans. Usually beans, if you spray them with an antifungal that will deal with the rust, it gets them under control. Give the beans a water-soluble fertilizer. If a lot of the leaves are damaged, they do grow back and they can produce. Um, but I would more importantly mark down that rust shows up in your garden and you want to start spraying for it a good two weeks before it shows up. And that's how next year you kind of get a handle on it. Sometimes when we spray once a problem shows up, there's a lot of damage. We can get it under control, but it's really this preventative spraying that makes all the difference. Donna, good question. So snow peas can tolerate frost. And here's the thing, and it kind of ties into some of the stuff people were talking about days to harvest. So I am sowing peas in Maryland now. And it's early, it's warm. They may struggle a little bit. I'm gonna use the shade cloth that Jay was talking about. I'm gonna plant some under a tree in a shadier part of my garden. Because pea leaves can take a frost, we think, hey, they're gonna be okay. Most peas take about, let's just say, 75 days to start producing, and they can keep producing for two or three weeks after that. So you want them maturing and producing before frost comes because frost actually damages the pea pod and it damages the flowers. Like frost won't damage your cauliflower, your brassicas, lettuce can freeze. But peas are kind of weird in the sense that the, the growth, um, the leafy green, the stems can take a frost but the flowers and the pods can be damaged by a heavier frost. They can do okay with a light frost. So I like going with 90 days. So about the end of October now is the frost date here. So I've get August, September, October, that's about 90 days. They're gonna accelerate and growing. Hopefully, you know, not get too beat up now in August, which I will use the shade cloth, and then I'll start to accelerate, but they're gonna start producing before the frost rolls in. Hopefully that made sense, but that's a really good question. 
All right. Bobcat, you can cut kale back. So if you have like kale that's infested with uh, white flies, it doesn't really taste great with the heat of the summer. You can cut the leaves back, um, keep it well watered, and it'll start growing new leaves. And if it survives, sometimes, you know, a rot gets into the stem of the kale. I have two that died that way or an insect gets in there. Anyway, if it survives and the cool weather comes in, the taste changes, the leaves take off, and it tastes really, really good. Um, Janet, lettuce, so the fall crops, I can't go over again because I just covered that, but lettuce you definitely want to do um, later in the season. Lettuce, spinach, radishes, maybe towards the end of August, beginning of September in your area. Where are we at? All right, we've got, let's, we'll finish up in five minutes. We're also going to be doing a launch of Grows We Grow, a premiere at 12 o'clock, and that's part of the Perk memberships. And that's really a tour of my garden, and mixed in there are tours of people's gardens that are Perk members. And it's a really fun video to make and to watch because you see all these ideas. Um, <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. You see all these ideas that you can use in your garden, from trellising to some things that I don't want to ruin a surprise because I know that Stacey Everett Chicken Mama set something up for her garden produce. Um, you get to see that in the video. All right. Uh, Urban, the rumor is terracotta red is coming back in the fall. I will give you more information when I know. And it's, it's not really a rumor. I've been talking with them. Uh, Pedro, butternut squash has drooped, has dropped every single fruit this year. The zucchini next to it is full of fruit. What can cause the butternut squash to do this? So again, sometimes it's variety dependent. Um, if the butternut, if a, so butternut's female flower, butternut, you see a little baby butternut, a flower, that's the female flower. On the zucchini, a female flower, a little tiny zucchini and a flower. If they don't get pollinated, they start to grow a little bit, they brown or they fall off. So I would guess that maybe the squash isn't being fully pollinated. And I'm, you know, kind of suspecting your butternuts are dropping when they're smaller. But if they get pollinated, they should manage and do okay. Brent, that variety I've grown before of pole bean from All America Selections, it's a great one. That's an, another good thing too, is buying hybrids. First of all, hybrids are not GMOs. So we got to wrap up in the next two minutes. Are not genetically modified organisms, like things that can't be created in nature. Hybrid is just a gardener like you and I cross-pollinating and creating a variety that has disease resistance. So if you have diseases in your gardens, look for hybrids. They're really, really good. Thank you, Bobcat. I appreciate you guys. Joey, I missed your question, sorry, or I answered it poorly, but it's hard sometimes to uh, get all the questions rolling in. Um, <laughs> Jay, how do you nominate me for Teacher of the Year Award? I don't know. I don't even know if they have awards. Um, Joey, if you throw your question out again real quick, I might be able to see it before we wrap up. Um, I don't know, but that's my goal. I just want to teach. I want people to have better gardens and, you know, that's what I enjoy. Anna, what is better to control fungus? They all work. I always say it's not so much the spray you're using, it's really your routine. So it's more important to stick to a routine, 7, 10, 14 days, than a specific thing. However, I like hydrogen peroxide on tomatoes and peppers. It's really all I use. Sometimes I put down baking soda. Sulfur dust is good um, for powdery mildew and other things. Copper fungicide is effective. Copper is in copper fungicide. It is considered organic, but I still don't want to eat it or ingest it. Um, so there's not one that's particularly the best. You just have to be using it in a targeted way. All I can answer to that is um, for tomatoes and peppers, I like using hydrogen peroxide. That's been my go-to spray for really for the last five years. 
Joey, how to support large sunflower heads. So I don't, I don't have an answer to that. So sorry that you sent it back out there. So a sunflower, eight foot, 10 foot, 12 foot plants, big head, if it's at an angle, it's gonna overweight and the whole plant's gonna fall out. So I actually put in metal posts and I tie the stalk up to that metal post or I pull it back and I tie it to my fence. You really wanna keep that sunflower, you know, perpendicular to the ground, straight up. If you're talking about supporting the initial head that's just curling and, and having problems, I'm not sure how you do that, but I have to stake up my really tall plants because they will grow, become weighted, and they will just fall out of the ground. All right, I'm about to wrap up looking for last minute questions. Vicki, I saw I missed yours, so we'll end on yours. My cucumber plant is growing lush and pretty, but there are no flowers, only leaves. Nope, you can't do anything about it. If you check out the internet, it says give them more potassium, more phosphorus, but if your garden is healthy, you have the, those nutrients in your ground, you are just waiting for the flowers to start, especially if they're green and healthy. Um, I wish there was a way to speed it up. Again, with that, maybe you only have one variety. I would plant several different varieties of cucumbers um, and see which ones flower and do best because some of them just flower at different rates. If the heat is really, really rolling in, sometimes plants will abort fruits, won't flower regularly, but there's no real way to kind of change that up. All right, we are done. I will do this every second and fourth Thursday at 11 a.m. This is a public live Q&A. If you're inter interested in the private um, perk memberships Q&A, check out any video description. There are links to that. And at 12 o'clock in 26 minutes, we're going to be doing a premiere of Grow As We Grow, touring my garden and four other people's gardens. All right, you guys have a great week. Thanks so much.